anarchists and political beliefs kind of mm-hmm. lined up and he was like oh my god this guy's so great he wrote all these papers and he was all into this guy but and he was married at the time um he was 21 years old um but he met young mary who was 14 hmm. yeah i don't like that it's never good it, and it happens all the time especially like we, back then and it happens still to this day so yeah it does it's i gross. just watched this thing um it was a tiktok so you know take it for what it is but talking about all these famous men who were like grooming these 14 and 13 year old girls um and people are surprisingly did it who uh, like well obviously elvis because Priscilla was like 14 oh we knew that i knew about that and did you know steven tyler bought the guardianship of a 17 year old girl from her mother so he could take her across the border or state lines he bought it and the mother took the money <gasps> yeah so he could have sex with her well what else do you Gross! need to take her places for that is disgusting i know and then you think of uh oh. what is it uh oh, yeah, there's uh, Leah, uh the singer Leah, and um the one that just got convicted the one that pees on people oh yeah she was like 14 16 when she got married to him oh, creepy just some creepy oh, creepy creepy yeah things. yuck anyway yeah so, there's, i watched a documentary on child brides basically and how it's legal it's like legal pedophilia these Ugh. men can is if a, the parents get Sign permission off. yeah a woman even in new, even in new york state yep. a girl as young as what 15 or 16 can, can get anyone. married a man who's 40 or 50 and if you're signing that paper off you're a piece of garbage yeah if you're a parent saying it's okay now your child doesn't know any better because they're being groomed by this pedophile pedophile mm-hmm. and you're okay with it like come on so anyway, Mary was 14. He was 21. We know how we feel about that. We don't like it. Uh, but at that time, it really was a thing. That's what everyone did. Um, now, Yes, but the fact that he was married already. Oh, yeah. That's like. Percy Shelley no. is kind of a disgusting man. Just you think? Saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know Julian Sand played him. And we love him. And we love him. But Julian Sand didn't do this stuff. He's still attractive. Oh, my God. I love him. <laughs> um. They would sneak and meet each other um, often in the churchyard where her mother was buried because she spent a lot of time there. And her stepsister Claire would help them meet up because she was all about rom- – it was very romantic. You know, everything – ooh, it was that time of – in the romantic period and every ooh, yes. this is love. And, this well, is the best romance novels from that period. Yes. Seriously. And, like gothic in romantic mm-hmm. era. Yeah. Um, so here's where – this is Jane awful. Austen. Jane Austen was at her peak yeah. then. Yeah, she's this great. is no Jane Austen tale. No, listen. Okay, to this. I'm listening. Mary says <clears throat> that she lost her virginity in the churchyard by her mother's grave. What? Percy Shelley. Ew. Yeah. So they basically did it on their mother's grave. Oh, mother's, isn't that disgusting? That is horrible. Ew. I wrote ew. Creepy. Ew. It's just wrong on many levels. Oh. Um. Mary said that she was attracted to Percy for his wild intellect because he was very smart and he was different and his unearthly looks. Uh, I've seen pictures of Percy Shelley. He ain't no Julian Sands. Unearthly? But if he looked like Julian Sands, I could see why she would be having sex <laughs> on her. That's terrible. No, I couldn't. I would not do that. No. Ever, not ever. But I probably would have been fine with a 21-year-old bitch showing attention to me if it was Julian Sands. That's how they mold you. Don't fall for it, girls. Don't. Mm-mm. Um, her father obviously disapproved of this when he found out that they were having a relationship because his daughter's 14, he's 21, and he's a married man. Like, it, her father had, like, these, you know, anarchy beliefs and, like, against society, but there's some things that he still felt like, no, we don't do that around here. Um, right. And this caused her father not to want to speak to her for many years, so she chose Percy over her dad. At 14. She's just a baby, though. He shouldn't have... Yeah. It's like, he shouldn't... It shouldn't have been him mad at her. He should have been mad at Percy. Right. But you don't ever get mad at the man, Margaret. It's never the man's fault. Oh, yeah. That's right. So, July of 1814, they decided they were going to run off and elope, even though he's married. They're going to run off together. <laughs> because everyone's in London are like, did you hear about Percy and Shelley? And he's sleeping with Godwin's daughter, who's 14, and he's married. There was all, all these, the respectable people in society were gossiping about it, and they wanted to get away from that. So what, Percy Shelley's famous for running away from his problems. Right. So he leaves his wife, oh, my, oh, she has two kids. He's, they have two children, mind you. Mm-hmm. Percy and his first wife, two children. He leaves her and runs off somewhere with a 14-year-old girl. Um, 
Claire goes with them. I hate Percy Shelley. I know. He's an asshole. <laughs> I know. And Claire goes with them and they run off together. And they go trampsing about London and all these things happen. And it made the gossip even more big in London, which made her father pissed off. Like, great. And now all this gossip's still happening. You made it worse. And so, that's what it was about. It was like, it's not even so much that they did it. It's the fact that all of London knows about it. That's, that's what made her dad really mad, I think, makes, more yeah. than anything. So this is July. They were gone until September when they returned. She was pregnant. But then they had no money. Because Percy, being a baron and drinking and partying and doing opium all the time, doesn't bring you much money. Especially when he, he's a poet, he's famous, but he's not doing a lot to promote himself. You know what I mean? He's not getting his stuff out there. So um, they come back. She's pregnant. Um, they're shunned by people in the respectable society because she, you know, she's this mistress. He left his wife and two kids. He's a dirtbag, basically. Um so her father said, no, nah, sorry, you built this bed. You made this bed. You're going to lie in it. And he did not help them. Percy would disappear often because he was trying to not get arrested for his credit. So they had debtors prison back in England. Oh, then, yeah. You know, where they arrest people for being in debt. So he was trying to avoid that. Okay, I'm going to, this is something I have to throw in here. So this is like around 1814, 1815. They're still doing this. But. On a far end of another part of our world, on April 15th, 1815, this, this plays into this story, so I have to talk about it, and I didn't know this was even a thing that ever happened, so it's very interesting. A massive volcano, Mount Tamboro, and it's the biggest one ever in human history, expl- it, it exploded. Um, it's in Sambawa, Lesser Sunda Islands, in Dutch East Indies. Um... It had a rate of seven on the volcanic index, which if you want to compare it to Mount St. Helens, which happened, you know, not that long ago, that was a five. So this was a seven. So it was like wow. the biggest thing they've ever seen. Um, 12,000 people died because of it. Um, and estimated that 1 million people starved to death as the result. <gasps> and you'll hear why. Um, <clears throat> 35 miles of rock and toxic ash sulfur covered the the um, horizon and even spread around the world, even into America, where everything was clouded and there was like this smog-like redness in the sky. Um, and this lasted for three years, mind you. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Makes you, that's like probably what killed the dinosaurs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It caused a volcanic winter that went, to, went into the summer of 1816. So this is where some of this comes into play, okay? Uh, sunlight was blocked from the sky because they had this haze, right? So crops couldn't grow crops were failing temperatures dropped to freezing during the summer it would cause a volcanic winter um it completely disrupted all the weather patterns like everything was messed up and like i'm surprised it, people survived this and then it lasted so long as it did like, i had no clue that this was even a thing that ever happened um and now like i said this plays into what happens in 1816 and where frankenstein ideas come from because if it didn't, this didn't happen, I don't know if she would ever have thought of Frankenstein just saying. Mm. Okay, so now we're going to go back. Had to throw that in there in the timeline, okay? So, um, Mary, Percy, and Claire. Claire was always with them. Claire is a big part of this story. Her stepsister. Her stepsister, yes. They were basically the same. I think Mary was seven, like, they're a year apart. Or eight months apart or something. Um, they all lived together. And it's pretty much known that. Percy and Claire were sleeping together too. Mm. They believed in free love. Okay. And Mary believed in free love and she was okay with it, but she was, it's like, that's my sister. You know, that, why are we, why are we doing mm-hmm. that? So it kind of bothered her and she was home pregnant and they'd be gallivanting around together. And he even had written a poem about Claire. Like, I can't remember the name of the poem. I wish I wrote it down, but you can look it up. Yeah, like I, if you're an, an adult. Yeah. More power to you. Do what you want. Yeah, Free these love, are all two that. young girls. These are girls. These are children. Yep. That's not consenting. Like, I just, like, he might feel that way, but they're, like, too young to know what they feel. They don't yet. know. And, and they're, like, swept up in the romance of it. It's Percy Shelley. Because I'm telling you, at 16, when I watched Gothic, if Julian Sand had showed up at my door, I probably would have went on a date with him. <laughs> because I was young and stupid. And didn't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're so easily... 
swept up in that, like, oh, yeah, that hormonal, emotional, like, romantic thing that, yeah, totally get how it happened. Oh, totally, for sure. Um, so Mary gives birth to her child two months premature and she died a few weeks later. So this would cause a great depression for Mary. She lost her first child and she wasn't even 17 yet. Ugh. And she became very haunted by the fact that this baby died. She was haunted by the baby during the time. Um, that was like in the beginning of the year, um, February twenty second, eighteen sixteen. Oh no, that was when she she gave birth to her first child. February second of eighteen sixteen, she gave birth to a second child named William after her father. So she got pregnant again, and basically instantly afterwards, because Shelley is apparently can't get enough of it, and she probably wasn't even healed from the first baby. Oh. And have another one, um, and then March of the same year of eighteen sixteen, Claire. Uh, met the famed poet Lord Byron. She has the thing for poets. Yes. And Claire wanted to be famous. Like, she wanted to be known. She didn't care what it was that she was known for. She just wanted to be famous. Uh, She was beautiful. She had curly, dark hair, and um, people just were attracted to her, you know? Um, At the time, he was the director of the Drury Lane Theater, and she went to him for advice about her career. She wanted to be an actress or a writer. Um, She would go to him and then eventually led to an affair because she's young and beautiful and she became kind of obsessed. Uh, Like she's obsessed with Lord Byron. (laughs) Again, if he looked like in the movie Gothic, I can see why. (laughs) Uh, And she became obsessed with him and... Basically, at some point, he just got kind of tired of her because that's what he's known for. Like, he just uses and walks away. Like, that's Lord Byron. So, it's said that Lord Byron, um, he believed in free love, too. Like, he was all about the free love. He had that same kind of ideals as Percy Shelley did. It was, like, the thing for the artists of the time to be that way. And it is said that he was mad, bad, and dangerous to know. So, mm. hot, obviously, just <laughs> her, right? It's like, might as well have a motorcycle. I know. This is the motorcycle of the time. Yeah. yeah. So, it's rumored <laughs> that he slept with hundreds of men and women, um, and he's legendary aristocratic, aristocratic excess. Like, he was just played up that aristocratic charm. He, he drank heavily. He ate rich foods. He's all about that kind of thing. Mm. And depraver. Depravery. Depra- Depravity. Thank you. Can't say, I can't speak. Margaret has to talk to Muscle me. relaxers. No, that's normal. I can't speak. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so he had, he was married also at the time. His wife and him were married and he was having affairs with everyone. Everyone. But the big thing that came down to where people started going, Woof, okay, you you sleep with everyone, whatever. But your half-sister... Byron, your half sister, not your stepsister, your half sister. He oh. loved his half sister. Well, he's playing a toot and comic card. Yeah, yeah. He could be he royalty in ancient Egypt. Ew, gross. Oh, so that's like his a, wife that's a step above. Like that is just yeah. Ew. No. Um. Gross. So he was having an affair with his half sister, and his wife was like, "All right, this is enough of that." And they actually got divorced. Which is wow. not something that happened back then. No. But she was not standing for a good I wouldn't for either. you, good for Byron her. wife, lady, Baroness Byron. I don't know what your name is. He's Lord. She's Lady. Lady Byron. Good for you for leaving him. So he, now people like, first of all, there's all these rumors and he was proud of those rumors. Yeah, I'm a latest man. I'm out there partying. But when they started saying, ew, you, you, did, you were with your stepsister and your wife left you. Like that's Half pretty. Sister. Yeah, your half sister, and your wife left you. That's pretty low. Your wife left you. Like that was embarrassing to him, and he was like, "Oh my god, I can't be around this. I don't want to hear it." Because he and him, like Percy Shelley, runs from his problems. Mm-hmm. So Claire, who was obsessed with Byron at the time, and found out she was pregnant, oh. she hears that he's going running out of he's leaving, and she hears why, and she's all like, "I don't, I can't be without this man. I need to be with him." He doesn't know this, that she's feeling this way, because he's taken off. She can't find him. But she knows he's going to Switzerland, and she knows where he's going there, because she found out somehow. She used her feminine wiles, and she figured it out. It probably wasn't that hard to find out. So, at this time, Mary and Percy were going through their own stuff. The child died. They just had a baby. Um, He's in debt, too. He's trying to avoid credit 
prison and all that. So Claire's like, what? you know what we should do? We should go to Switzerland. We should go vacation.